Welcome to Simple Software Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate a shopping list based off of some data using a pivot table. So for this example, um, I, I'm a big World of Warcraft player, so uh, I've got this quest coming up uh, called To Be a Master. And in this quest, it's a cooking quest, and I have to make these five different recipes. Now, some of them share ingredients, and so I thought, you know, instead of having to look at each recipe every time and try to figure it out, why don't I use Excel and a pivot table to figure out what exactly I need so I can make sure that I have enough uh, ingredients to to make these five different recipes. Um, this could also work for uh, if you have like a, um, a home project, you know, maybe you need um, wood and nail screws, whatever. Um, you can do a ton of different things with this. So um, the way I have this set up, and you can see how it's going to turn out. So I've got my recipe here, I've got the quantity of each item, and then I have each ingredient listed here. So really simple. Where this can get a little more complicated is if you're trying to actually uh, use actual recipes, just because there's different units of measure. So that's where it gets a bit complicated. So for that, you might want to find an alternative option, but um, but this could even work for that as well. Um, so what I have here is, yeah, I have my recipes. You'll notice that I have the recipe listed on each line. Um, so even though I'm only making this recipe once, there's four ingredients, so it's listed four times. That makes it a lot easier for the pivot table to work as intended. If I don't do that, it's not going to work out well, and you'll see why uh, in a little bit. So what I'm going to end up generate uh, generating is a list like this. So I'm just going to delete this right now and then we can start over fresh. So what you can do here is on the left side list off uh, your project. So like if you're building a home workshop and you have different sections, so maybe you have a, a workbench and then you've got uh, maybe a cupboard that you're putting in. That's the kind of things that you can list down here. Uh, also if you wanted to um, maybe get different t-shirt orders you could do the same thing like if there's a style you can list it here you can list quantities here and then maybe sizes over here so you can auto generate that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to highlight all the data here and then i want to click on insert and then i want to click on pivot table now for this example i'm just going to put it on the sheet so we can see things side by side um, but you can also opt to open it in the new worksheet, which sometimes works better depending on what you're doing. So I'm just going to click on existing worksheet. It wants to know where I'm going to put it, so I'm just going to click right here. That's going to be my starting point, and it'll build out from there. And everything else is good. I'm going to click on OK. So this is where it gets a little nerve wracking, but let me tell you, uh, Excel has made it so much easier now to do this. So what we have here is we have our different categories here. So recipe, quantity, and ingredient. And then we've got this down here to kind of um, help us build this. Now the great thing about this is it's drag and drop. So if it starts looking funky, you can make tweaks uh, very easily without you know, really causing any damage to what you're building. So first thing I want to do is, so I don't really care about the recipes. I just want to know how many of each ingredient do I need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag ingredient. I'm going to drag it down to the rows. So that puts it down here on rows. Now, if I were to put it under columns, you can see it's going to go across the top. That's a little hard to read. It's cut off right now. I, I am zoomed in just to make it easier for you to see. Um, but I want to make this a list. So now I can put this back down here in rows and I've got a nice list here. So now all I need is the quantity. So I'm going to drag quantity. I want that in the values here. And so what this is going to do is this is defaulting to the sum of the quantity. Uh, and so what it does now is it goes through this list and says how many times is black pepper on there. It's on there twice. We can see it here and here. And so on down the list. So it takes a lot of the guesswork away. It takes a lot of manual work away. And as you can see, it's really easy uh, to do. It's, it's very easy. 
um, just like I said, drag and drop. Now, if for some reason this was not in sum, if it was a, a different uh, value than what you wanted, you can always click on here and select uh, value field settings. And this is where you can change it. So if instead you want the count, you can do that. Um, you could even actually, let's try something else. So if we want to do the count, so let's put ingredient down here. See, it automatically, see, it just counts how many times it's on the list. It's not counting the quantity. So we don't want to do that. So let's put this back and let's put quantity here. So that's the basics of how to do this. Now, if you want to stick around, I can show you something pretty cool in addition to this using some more uh, calculations. So what I'm going to show you now is say I want to make this five times. How many times, how, how am I going to calculate that? So what you could do is you could just do equals and then click on this and then the asterisk which is the multiplication sign and if I wanted to make five I could do times five so this will automatically calculate so I can drag that down um, but that's not working out right see and I can tell you why right now is it put see it put these dollar signs here so what happens when you put dollar signs before a row and or column um, it's saying use only this specific row and this specific column um, regardless of of what else happens on the page so it's always going to look to F2 so if I take that out it's going to adjust the formula if if I add columns if things change so let's try this again we don't have to delete that this will write over it so let's try again see if that works that didn't work So as you can see, that didn't work out quite as well as we expected. But what we can do is we can do something that's fairly simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a row above here, okay? And so I'm just going to call this batches. And just get it over to the right so it's, it's a little bit different. So now what I want to do is that I know that in order to make this once, I need one of these, five of these, and so on, right? So now if I want to make five, I need to know how many I need for five, six, seven, who knows how many in, uh, batches. So I'm just going to change this to quantity for one. And then this is going to be quantity total, okay? Or you can name it whatever you want. So what I'm going to do here is I want to enter the count of batches. So we're just going to start with one. So now this is where we're going to need to use that dollar sign, right? So I want this times that, or this, sorry, okay. So we want to enter equal here. We want to click here. So this is the ingredients for one, but then we want to multiply it by the quantity of batches. So for this example, I'm going to click here then I'm going to go in and I'm going to enter that dollar sign before B and before 1. So that way, when I drag this, this uh, calculation all the way down, this formula down, it's going to always pull from this batches field right here. So let's drag that down. There we go. So these numbers should all match these numbers because I have one, just for 1 right here, okay? So now say I want three batches. So you'll see all of those, all of those auto calculate. So now I'm going to need to update my, my pivot table here to reflect this. So I can either click here and I can update it or what I can do is I can just, let's just delete it and start over again. So we're going to just grab this section here. So as long as nothing changes, just leave this part selected click on insert, click on this lower part of pivot table. We want to make it on the existing worksheet and we'll start it right from here. And we're going to click OK. So we're going to start again fresh with our pivot table. We want the ingredient here in the rows. Now this time instead of uh, quantity for one, we want the quantity total. So then that's going to update there. So now if I change this to five, we're going to need to go over here though and refresh it. So each time you 
make a, a, an update here, you're going to want to update it here. But so now we know exactly how much I need of each ingredient in order to make five batches of this. So pivot tables aren't as uh, intimidating as they may seem. I know it sounds kind of weird and they look kind of funky at first, but as you can see, they're super helpful. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is say we want a breakdown of uh, ingredients by recipe. So what I can do is I can drag that here into columns and what this is going to do as we slide along it lists the five different recipes here and what ingredients go into each and then the grand total down here. So that's pretty handy. You can also flip-flop them so if we drag recipe down here and ingredient up here same thing so we can see the recipes here um, or yeah and then the ingredients across the top that's kind of a, a long list not super easy to look at so I like just having the ingredients down here um, also this is kind of nice too you can see a nice handy breakdown so there's lots of different options here to play around with uh, so it's it's kind of fun just to play around with pivot tables and kind of see how much more efficient you can make uh, calculating different things without having to do it manually or trying to count it up yourself. So I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out my website, simplesoftwaretutorials.com, and have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in.